Rating agencies have been um, criticized a lot of con contributing to the financial crisis, especially because they have been given high ratings to um, subprime mortgage assets, which in, in, at the end of the day defaulted. So the question is, how, how come that the rating agencies issue these high ratings? And we try to um, understand where this is coming from, understanding the business model of rating agencies and also understanding um, how, how this rating inflation can happen. And what we're trying to figure out is how come that these ratings are valuable even though um, the underlying informativeness of these ratings is actually quite low. And it turns out that regulation plays a key role in explaining this. So the solution is actually quite simple. Get rid of rating continued regulation, let rating agencies do their job, the, the job that they have been doing for the past 100 years. And it has been working pretty well, essentially, maybe too well, so that government actually started thinking we could use these ratings for, for our regulation. Rating agencies have existed for 100 years and they have been doing basically a business of providing information to investors. However, since the 1970s, pretty much since 1976 exactly, the government has been using these ratings at the same time. So it's not just that the ratings are used by investors, but they're also used by the government for regulation purposes. So what the government does, for example, is they say that banks have to hold less capital against triple A rated securities versus triple B rated securities. Suddenly, this triple A label in itself becomes valuable even if it does not um, if it does not provide any information. And that creates huge misincentives on the side of the rating agencies actually to provide truthful information. In the corporate bond market, only 1% of all bonds are actually rated AAA, whereas in the subprime mortgage market, it was 70% of assets were rated AAA. So how come that there is such a difference between the, the, the rating or basically um, the, the, the way they rated um, in the AAA or in the subprime mortgage market versus um, um, the traditional corporate bond market. Our theory tells us that this is actually coming from the fact that um, the regulation did not distinguish between different asset classes. It used to be the case that they have actually provided truthful or informative ratings that were useful for investors, but at some point they just figured it uh, provide, provides them enough money if they just pretty much label everything high. Investors understand it can't. You know, if you see everything is rated AAA, it's hard to believe that everything is really um, impossible to default. They were willing to accept that because they have to hold less capital against it. The fundamental problem that we identified is basically that the government uses these regulations or uses regulations based on ratings. If the government didn't have these rating contingent regulation, um, I believe that the ratings automatically would become more informative. It shouldn't be the firm that pays for it, it should be um, the investor that pays for, for the ratings. But it doesn't work in an environment where these ratings are used for regulatory purposes because actually the investor is willing to pay more for an asset that has a high rating label even if it doesn't provide any information. So there are only, only three firms out there, essentially that's Moody's, S&P and Fitch. And they essentially split the market. So they have 90, 98% of the underlying rating agency market. So that is one component. So they, they are actually able to extract a lot of the surplus. So it's not, it's not a competitive market. So that's one ingredient of the model is to have essentially a, a non-competitive um, non -com 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 business model as, on part of the rating agencies. Whereas investors on the other side, they're competitive and they're competing for funds. So they're just required to um, so they just get a fair return. But what is important is that our investors in our model are not, are not dumb, meaning they are not fooled by high ratings. So the conclusion is, if the importance of regulation or is, is too high, then essentially what happens is that the rating agency will not provide any information to investors. It will just inflate ratings. And basically what we've been seeing in in recent years that the regulators more and more actually relied on ratings to determine capital requirements for banks, 
um, mutual fund restrictions were based on ratings. So there more and more these rules have become important and that caused rating agencies actually to change um, their optimal inform informativeness of ratings. When you look at the proposed remedies in Congress that are currently discussed, they're actually quite complicated. You have to figure out how we actually allocate um, rate or rating agencies to, to bond issues, um, how are rating agencies selected. But I think they miss this one picture that if you don't get rid of rating contingent regulation, the same problems that we currently see would still arise. Mm -hmm.